Good day ladies and gentlemen, I just read Creek by Steve Lyons and it's partially great, partially not so great. See the book contains two storylines between which it frequently switches. The first storyline takes place in current 40k and sees a Creek regiment fighting together with Cadians and some inquisitors against an army of orcs that have conquered an imperial hive city. Basically imagine the latest Kill Team trailer. Now if you were hoping for a perspective from one of the shovel boys after the civil war then I'm going to have to disappoint you. Even in the scenes that we are left alone with Kriegers, the book continues as if we are watching them from the outside and never really gives us a glimpse of what goes on behind the mask. But on the other hand, this is not necessarily a bad thing, as it transforms the Krieg into this weirdly inhuman army, seemingly sent from hell to destroy the enemies of humanity. They never remove their masks, don't speak unless questioned, ride on weird ironclad demon horses and seemingly have no emotions or sense of self-preservation whatsoever. The one thing the storyline does very well is hyping up the Kriegers, but sadly it also has some major flaws. For one, the Krieg mainly look impressive because the orcs are extremely forgiving enemies. I am not sure what happened to this orc army, maybe they fell off the delivery truck, but these guys are the weakest bunch of orcs I have ever seen. We're talking about orcs that can barely wrestle an unarmed human away from them, orcs that always let their opponents get up before attacking them further, and orcs that manage to accidentally kill themselves on a semi-regular basis. This is definitely not the best book to read if you're a fan of our beloved greenskins. But that aside, it really just frustrates me because the book doesn't need this. Seeing the Kriegsmen charge over no man's land on their demon horses, or seeing Kriegsmen walking around the camp like robots already made them cool enough. Putting them against such pathetic enemies doesn't really improve or change the portrayal of the Kriegs in any meaningful way, so I would have preferred it if the book hadn't done this. Furthermore, the story doesn't really contain any interesting characters or plot elements outside of some very simple symbolic interactions with the other storyline. Truly, the only thing this story is good at is to show you how cool and freaky the Kriegers are, but you more or less get this after the first 50 pages. Nevertheless, the author decided to let more than half of the book take place in this slog of a timeline. This is one of those books where I found myself counting the pages until we return to the planet Krieg again, which is rarely a good thing. Conversely, the other story is actually really cool. We start off on an idyllic world with fields of green and lovely sunsets, a world noteworthy in the fact that it has never seen war on its surface. Yes friends, after an impressive introduction in which we see the Ordo Hereticus make first contact with the Kriegsmen after the planet had been declared dead, this is the Krieg that we are introduced to. In this story we follow Colonel Yurton, who quickly becomes the leader of the Loyalist faction after the rest of the planet has decided that the Imperium is not worth fighting for. Throughout the story we see both him and the world around him become more and more like the creek we know today. Every day of warfare the planet becomes a little shittier. Frequent bombardments force the people on the ground and after it turns out that creek's bowels are filled with poisonous gas, the people start wearing gas masks. Food runs out but luckily there is an admac that has found a way to grow eatable fungus on the ground. And so on and so forth. It was very interesting to slowly see how the actions of the characters shape the world of the modern corpsmen. The characters in this story are much more interesting than those in the other story as well. Jurton is an iron-fisted fanatic, yet during some rare moments we get to see some cracks in the mask, and if it wasn't for his advisor, the war might have ended very differently. His advisor, Archmagos Greel, is quite a creepy dude. Sure, he seems to have the best interest of Krieg in mind for the most part, but he isn't always sticking to plan and you're never completely sure what his personal agenda is. The chairman who leads the traitors is pretty basic, but he plays the villain well enough and the story isn't so much about him anyway. The way the loyalists react to his actions is much more the focus of the story. See, this story also has a little bit of a philosophical element in that regard. How far are they willing to go in order to achieve victory, and at that point, could it even be called that? Would it at some point on the road to damnation not be better to simply surrender to the traitor forces? Few people in this book have easy answers to these questions, and even Colonel Yurton sometimes has his doubts. This together with the cool World War I vibes made the storyline quite the read. All in all, I'm giving this book 4 to 5 disabled orcs. The Creek Civil War makes for a very interesting storyline, but unfortunately, the mediocrity and the trolling orcs of the other story really drag the novel down. If these were separate novels, I'd rate the former 5 stars and the latter 3 or maybe even 2. But together, I'll keep it at 4. Regardless, this is still quite a decent read and definitely a recommendation for all Imperial Guard or Creek fans in the audience. Oh, before I go, a little side note regarding the audiobook, the narrator mostly does a great job with the French accent of the Creek. But just so you know, throughout the novel, the Creek accents become increasingly more German, which was a little weird. Anyway, that was all I got for you today. Have a nice day, and don't forget your daily prayers to the Runist powers.